we're, we're seeing a sense of uh, determination. This is, uh, on some levels, frightening. Other levels, optimistic. We are, we are unleashing the power of industry and government to try to get as many Americans through this as humanly possible. It's not going to be easy. Uh, but nothing that has nothing that has ever uh, been accomplished in this country has been easy. So far, at least 14,250 cases in the United States, and of course that number is expected to dro uh, grow dramatically, at least 205 deaths. Uh, the governor of California has estimated that well over half of the entire population of California will be infected. Now, I don't know if that's an alarmist um, announcement, if that's realistic, if that's true, that that's even possible. I'm trying to strike a balance between being frightening and um, just just flat out panicking people, or but also making sure that you take this seriously, that you do not uh, compromise in terms of personal hygiene, failing to wash your hands. Um, staying away from groups of people, staying away from other people. I'm just doing my best. I am, <laughs> I'm kind of an island. Uh, I get, I'm getting a lot of kicks out of people uh, kidding me on the on the text message, the My Pillow text line at 800-655-Mike. People watching me do the show from my kitchen, and I'm slowly adding different things in this little used kitchen. Last night it was popcorn for dinner, and I got the new popcorn maker back there. It's a nice looking red popcorn maker. Uh, and it was uh, it was popcorn night as I was watching all the news. I'm trying to keep from touching my face. I'm trying to remember. And and you know, I just wonder if you appreciate that fine line between scaring people and having a false sense of security. I saw something from this is from the Daily Beast, I think, but it, uh, just a paragraph that I flagged. I was reading this day before yesterday, but listen to this paragraph. Try to grasp the numbers here, because there are a lot of people who say, ah, oh, more people die from the flu, more people get killed in car accidents. And technically that, I think, is true. But listen to the way this is written. Don't even know who the author is. Like I said, I copied and pasted it, but it's a, it's a paragraph that got my attention. There were 36,000 automobile deaths in 2018. The CDC projected anywhere between 22,000 and 55,000 flu deaths this year. If we let the country go about its business as usual and 50 million people get infected with coronavirus, assuming a 2% death rate in line with the CDC's and, and all the experts' estimates, a million people in America would die. That's more than 10 times the combined number of flu and auto deaths. And, of course, deaths are just the tip of the iceberg in measuring the devastation. What would the number of deaths be from non-corona illnesses and injuries that couldn't be treated at overloaded hospitals? What would the economic impact be from tens of millions of people being pushed temporarily out of the labor force due to illness, many struggling to pay medical bills, and so on? The potential crisis, this article says, is an order of magnitude beyond other social problems. So, you know, the, the writer of this piece said, I can understand why a stoned kid who's wandering around a Florida beach might not grasp that. It, it's, it's an interesting debate, and of course, we always tend to be fatalistic and go to worst-case scenario. And that would be worst-case worst scenario, because the caveat is, imagine we just let everything go as business as, as usual. Well, it's not business as usual. I was at the airport yesterday, Tampa Bay International Airport. It was literally a ghost town. I've never seen an airport have so few people in it in my life. This is a busy, bustling, very, very good airport. I, it's one of the best airports in the country, and it was just empty. I went to uh, Chick-fil-A, and in the airport, a young lady asked what I wanted. I said, I'd like a grilled chicken sandwich with no lettuce, please. 
Now, I know, and she said, well, they don't have lettuce. And I, I knew they did. I mean, I'm a Chick-fil-A regular, and I've been trying to lose weight. Thank you, incidentally, to those of you watching me on the YouTube channel uh, the, uh, or on MikeOnline.com who've noticed I've lost some pounds. I'm trying, trying my best. <laughs> as soon as I got into a gym routine, they closed my gym. So, so much for that plan. Anyway, grilled chicken, no lettuce, please. I don't like that big, healthy, nasty stalk of lettuce they always put on the grilled chicken. The young lady said, they don't put, we don't put lettuce on the grilled chicken. I knew they did, but I played along. I said, okay, fine. And I said, you sure? She goes, yeah, that's only deluxe. Anyway, they gave me the grilled chicken sandwich. Of course, it has the big uh, stalk of lettuce on it. So I bring it back to the counter, and I hand it to her, <laughs> and I say, I'm sorry. I, like I said, this, this has lettuce. I just really want a sandwich without lettuce. Incidentally, don't yell at me for not taking the lettuce off myself. I'm crazy that way, okay? I like to get a sandwich out of the box the way I like it. I don't like the lettuce. I hand it back to the poor girl. She takes the box from me. Her manager is standing next to her. You would have thought I had just handed her um, plutonium or, or, or the atomic bomb. The girl next to her said, you're not supposed to touch that box. Don't touch that food. That's the box. The, the sandwich is in the box. The girl that took the, took the box from me looks terrified, hands me back the sandwich. <laughs> so now she's giving it back to me. I'm like, well, what do you want me to do with it? She goes, throw it away. This is a trash can out there. She goes, throw it away. And I'm like, well, I, don't, I hate to waste it. She goes, throw it away. You've opened it. Well, yeah, I opened the lid to solve it. So I throw the sandwich in the trash can, and of course they make me another one without lettuce. Meanwhile, as I'm throwing the, 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 the sandwich away, I look around, and the poor young girl at the manager's urging, she is scrubbing her hands like she's just been exposed to kryptonite and she's Superman. And that poor girl, you'd have thought I was the carrier of all carriers. <laughs> she, she, I hope she didn't get in trouble. And it's kind of my fault. I mean, I'm handing her the sandwich. I don't want to do with it. I don't want the doggone lettuce. Such is life in America these days. 15 past the hour. A little bit later this hour, we're going to talk to an infectious disease specialist. There's a lot of conversation about the economic stimulus package that the Republicans and Democrats are trying to push through. The report now, $1,200 per person, up to $2,400 per couple. If you make $99,000 or less, you will benefit. If you make more, you won't. Nothing from the government. If you'd like details on this package, if you text the keyword package to 1-800-655-MIKE, that's the MyPillow text line, 800-655-6453, we'll send you back what this economic stimulus package looks like. You can break it down, see if you make enough, uh, kind of look at some of the specifics. And again, we're just doing that as a public service. doesn't cost anything. Just please don't text and drive. Just text the keyword package to 1-800-655-MIKE. 